pride yourself in taking risks, um, you know, musically in your life and just always experimenting. What would you say yeah. the, the most rewarding risk that you've ever taken has been? Making a song that the chorus had no words and it was, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Worked out pretty well. <laughs> Well, it's funny because, you know, you were, you were saying that, that that initially was a freestyle. So, like, it was. I'm, I'm interested in the process of, of the actual making of the song. So you had that recorded as no, no real lyrics, and you initially thought you wanted to uh, go back and fix it. But, like, walk me through when you heard it in the morning and you actually decided to, to leave it. <laughs> Man, it was, it was crazy. Like, it was literally in my living room. I was just chilling with my guys. My manager was there. So I was on the keyboard making a beat like I always do, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, after I made the beat, I was just vibing on it like I always do. <laughs> I freestyled the first verse, then I did the chorus. So I didn't do the second verse that night because I was really tired. It was like, it was around midnight and I, I was sleepy as well. So I, I was just like, a part of me wanted to actually go sleep and do the song in the morning, but like in the spirit of just following the vibes, I, I decided to finish the song, at least lead the idea before I went to bed. So I just laid the idea and I was like, okay, in the morning, the ah, 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 ah part, I'm, I'm gonna put like a real chorus there. So I woke up in the morning and we all heard the song and we were like, yo, like this is fire as it is. And that was pretty much how that happened. It, you know, it wasn't really something heard of. You know, there, there are not really any songs in the Afrobeat space, you know, in the, in the Hall of Fame, Afrobeat Hall of Fame that had choruses like that or that sounded like that. In fact, for that reason, the label I was signed to at the time didn't even take the song seriously as a single. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't wow. a club, it wasn't a club record. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's kind of the story of that record. It's, it's such a crazy story. Well, it's so interesting because even Kid Cudi's Day and Night, there was the same thing. Apparently everybody around him was t saying like, yo, you got to finish the song. Like, when are you going to finish the song? He's like, it's done. Because, <laughs> you know, like it, the way it repeats the hook in the verse. So like for you, did you, that morning, did you decide, even with, you know, the label, what they were saying, like, did you decide, now this is it, this is how we're putting it out? <laughs> it's so crazy because even I myself, when, I, when we made the song, I knew it was a crazy song. But at the time, there was literally no space for records like that. Like, everything in the club was different. Like, it was the Zanku era, the Shaku Shaku era. So, like, it was fast beats. So even I myself, like, you know, I, I believed in the record, but like when everyone around me kept, you know, opting for the faster records, I, I started to think that, oh, maybe the song is just not as great as I thought, you know what I mean? But then like when we released the EP, we just noticed that people were making videos, girls were making videos with that song specifically with no promo, nothing. It was just like, organically girls just always liked to make videos with the song so that was kind of when it was it was starting to get clear to everyone that okay this is a this is like a song that everyone loves and it's a hit was there a moment specifically where you started to realize it was like bigger than that and it was starting to go global yeah um so we did a remix uh, and we dropped it on Valentine's Day 2020. This was just before the COVID lockdown. And um, yeah, a couple months after the video dropped, um, I think Diddy was doing like a fundraiser thing. And um, Winnie Harlow came on the live on Instagram and she requested the song. And she did like a whole dance routine. So that was like when I would say, Love Wanted, he started to get like a little international attention, you know, because 
people here we already accepted it. it was already a big record but like at that point it started to get the attention of people who were not even african one supermodel to another supermodel to a ball player to a, you know it just kept going till we are where we are right now <laughs> did you uh end up talking to winnie at all after that oh sure we did yeah you th- <laughs> did she uh she's like how how did the song reach her radar it's crazy it was um her friend actually hera patra um so she she heard the song from her friend who was a dj in toronto <laughs> so um I don't know. She liked the song so much, and she, 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 she actually created the dance routine that Winnie did. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she was the one who came up with the routine, and um, yeah, it was basically like their their thing, you know, like you know, girlfriends have like their yeah. thing and their songs. <laughs> so it was kind of like that. Then, you know, it ended up on the Instagram live, and you know. She made a video too. She posted a video after that, after the Instagram live. So that I would say that was like a, a, yeah. a moment for the song last, and this was last year. This was even like a whole different era of Love Wanted because right now we're in a different era still, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it just has eras. <laughs> And I'm sure there's going to be another era. Like, but has there, been, has there been, you know, obviously Winnie and Diddy was huge. Has there been anyone else who's been really surprising who like was a fan of the song or who reached out or made a video? Yeah. Um, Cristiano Ronaldo was pretty huge. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, it's crazy because I was actually, I became a Manchester United fan because of Cristiano Ronaldo. And this was like way back. So so him coming back to the club after all these years and the song that they they posted him with walking on old trafford or tiktok was love Wantensy. and that was like crazy because i mean ronaldo is ronaldo <laughs> you know what i mean and um i think uh kendall jenner reposted a video too yeah from um, the met gala yeah, yeah, I saw that. Someone actually sent that to me. It's so crazy because 90% of the time, I don't even be knowing all this stuff. Like the the Diddy live of Winnie Harlow, it was someone who sent it to me and be like, oh, they're playing your song on this place, on the live. And I was like, oh, for real? So I go and I, I go on and I look at it. And I was like, oh, cool, nice. Then kind of the same with all these other ones it's it's like it's a long list it's a crazy long list of people but um shout out to everyone showing yeah. love for the song yeah no and 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 i feel like there's still like i said w- there's gonna be another push um and i think you know it's interesting because so many people there's a real movement with with afrobeats especially even in the u.s right now like is there a, a yeah. an american artist who you would love to hop on the remix or you, who you've been wanting to work with, who you think might fit that? Huh? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, I think Riri would be amazing on it. And like, this is not even because of like, I feel like because of where she's from, she's from the islands and stuff. Like, I think it just makes sense. That would be, that would be dope if that happened. Really dope. <laughs> Especially because she doesn't ever release music. So if she came out came out of the, the woodwork, just drop that. And <laughs> it's, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would also like to hear Cardi on it too. Like, I think she has, she also has the island vibe too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just putting this out there. Yeah. You know? Listen. <laughs> you never know a lot of the other stuff you've put into the universe has happened so you never mm-hmm. know um mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm also i i'm interested in, in your take on specifically you know i know you like refer to yourself as an uh an emo afro beat artist an urban afro like you've you've used different terms and kind of don't really box yourself in like you know how do you describe yeah. your your sound now or or what are those different you know niches within within the genre that you've created well, for me, I call my niche genre emo Afrobeats. 
And that's because, so I grew up listening to Afrobeats. Afrobeats is like, before the Western world started to catch on to Afrobeats, there's like a whole legacy of Afrobeats that came before this current age, you know what I mean? And um, there was a certain approach, there was a certain way the music was made. You know what I mean? And the way it was made reflected the time and the place it was made. And I just feel like as time goes on or as time has gone on, you know, the genre has had to evolve. And I feel right now we're in a different age. You know, people feel a different way in the world right now. You know, people don't feel the way they were feeling in the 90s or the, you know, the early 2000s, you know what I mean? So I kind of felt the need to, to, to kind of carve like a space in the Afrobeat space for myself and make music that represents me specifically. Cause I have a, I'm a cancer, first of all, and um, my moon sign is Pisces. So I have, I basically have two water signs. So I'm a really emotional person. So if I'm making Afrobeats, it has to just embody that. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna just go and make this straight up um, dance records. I mean, I could make the dance records and everything, but I feel like if I was going to make, make music that represented not just the genre, but me, myself, my energy and my nature, it would be Afro beats that just had emotions and vibes in it. Well, it's interesting because so, even, even like you were talking about, like the song, you know, it, it didn't fit the space at the time you made it even. And a lot of people were, it, you know, it seems from the outside that it's always a very upbeat, happy, you know, like it's a vibe on that level. And not to say that the song isn't that, but it does have that extra layer of emotion. So like, do you think yeah. now people are starting to feel more comfortable, you know, expressing that through the music? Absolutely. It's, I feel like, I feel like now even more artists are making music that have more emotions now you know which is good because i feel like the 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 afrobeat space needs more variety like it just needs it needs more people doing them you know what i mean and yeah, yeah like i think that's that's dope 